So we've already seen how to factor a quadratic trinomial when its leading coefficient, the coefficient in front of the x squared, is 1. But what we haven't yet seen is a method that will permit us to factor a quadratic trinomial when its leading coefficient is not 1, and it doesn't have a greatest common factor that we can take out to make its leading coefficient equal to 1. Such an example is the one we see here, 6x squared plus x minus 12. There's no greatest common factor that all three of its terms have in common that will permit us to factor out, for example, the 6 in front of the x squared and give us a quadratic with a leading coefficient of 1. So we are stuck with that 6 and are going to need a more powerful method to factor this quadratic trinomial. That more powerful method is called the AC method, and it's a method we'll be introduced to in this video. To get started with the AC method, remember that it's the best choice whenever you're dealing with factoring a quadratic whose leading coefficient is not equal to 1. Here the leading coefficient, which we're going to call a, is equal to 6. So we should think about using this method to factor this quadratic. So how does the AC method work? The good news is that it works in much the same way that the sum and product method works for quadratic trinomials whose leading coefficient is 1. We just have to play a game where we look for a pair of numbers that satisfy a couple of properties. First of all, that pair of numbers has to multiply together to give us not negative 12, as would be the case if we were treating this like a quadratic with a leading coefficient of 1, but instead, the product that we're looking for is the product of a times c, the x squared coefficient, multiplied by the constant coefficient. So the pair of numbers that we need multiply together to give us not negative 12, but 6 times negative 12, or negative 72. That's the key that makes this method different from the standard sum and product method that we would use if the leading coefficient were 1. The other part, the sum part of this method, remains the same. The pair of numbers that we find have to add together to give us the coefficient of x, which in this example is 1. So to get this method going, what I need are a pair of whole numbers, integers, if they exist, whose product is negative 72 and whose sum is positive 1. Such a pair is negative 8 and positive 9. Now what do we do with that negative 8 and that positive 9? Here's something that we could have done in the sum and product method, but we chose to skip over when we were looking at that method the first time. This intermediate step is important here in a way that it wasn't then. And the step is called splitting the x term. So the 1x, which is in the middle, this is the middle term of our trinomial, we're going to use the numbers we found, negative 8 and 9, as the coefficients of a pair of terms which would otherwise add together to give us that 1x. So we're going to rewrite 1x as negative 8x plus 9x. Why that's important, you'll see in a moment. I'm just going to add in the rest of our terms for context, the 6x squared in the beginning and the minus 12 at the end. So we've used these two numbers that we found in our sum and product game to split apart the middle term into two terms. What that allows us to do now is to take the first pair of terms and the second pair of terms and to treat them each as their own factoring problem. In other words, what we should have is that the first pair of terms has a greatest common factor that may be brought out and the second pair of terms should also have a greatest common factor that can be brought out. So here, 6x squared minus 8x has a greatest common factor of 2x, so we can factor 2x out of the first pair of terms. Meanwhile, 9x minus 12 has a greatest common factor of 3, so we can factor a 3 out of that pair of terms. So let's go ahead and do that. If I factor 2x out of 6x squared minus 8x, then what I have left over is 3x minus 4. And if I factor a 3 out of 9x minus 12, what I have left over is 3x minus 4. It's not a coincidence that those leftovers are exactly the same for the first pair of terms as they are for the second pair of terms. If they're not the same, you might want to go recheck your work at this stage. 
Now that we have factored out the greatest common factor for the first pair and for the second pair, we can use the fact that that factor 3x minus 4 is repeated twice and factor out that common binomial, writing it only once, and factoring out its coefficients 2x plus 3 as the cofactor in our final answer. So the final answer almost sneaks up on you a little bit in the AC method. It starts out by identifying that we should use this method because we had a quadratic trinomial whose leading coefficient was not equal to 1. To use the AC method, multiply together the x squared coefficient and the constant coefficient. In this example, that gave us negative 72. And that will be the product that you seek in your sum and product game. Once you win the sum and product game and find your pair of integers that multiply together to give you AC and which add together to give you the x coefficient, you then use those numbers to split your middle term into a sum of two like terms. Then, factor the first pair of terms and the second pair of terms using their individual greatest common factors. And what you should see happen is a common factor popping out. In our example, it was 3x minus 4, which then factoring that common binomial factor out leads you to your final answer. The AC method does take a little bit of getting used to, but it is sufficiently powerful that you'll then be able to factor many, many different quadratic trinomials whose leading coefficients are not 1.